San Diego. You might be there to surf or in town for Comic-Con, but any baseball fan should have a trip to Petco Park on their bucket list. This park is a true modern classic, a perfect blend of old and new. A tip to the old in that the entire park was designed around the historic Western Metal Supply Building, whose corner acts as the left field foul pole. While stadiums like Dodger Stadium and Angel Stadium embody California of the past, Petco Sandstone and Stucco feels like California of the present and of the future. Compared to other iconic stadiums, Petco and the Padres often go unnoticed. Some of that might be intentional, as the Padres have a long history of wearing camouflage jerseys on Sundays, but this season, Tatis, Machado, Myers, and company made sure that they couldn't be ignored. With a record four grand slams in four games, San Diego began Slam Diego. In the air to right field, towards the corner, it's back, it's gone! Welcome to Slam Diego! Grand slam for Eric Hosmer! For the first time in Major League history, a team has hit a grand slam in four consecutive games, and that team is the San Diego Padres! Eric Hosmer for the grand slam! Speaking of things you walk off, San Diego's most iconic dish is the California burrito perfect mix of the local Mexican influence and surfer culture. A California burrito replaces rice or beans with french fries. Multiple places claim to have invented it, but there are no shortage of fantastic options throughout San Diego. Making our own California burrito, we'll start with the meat. The most iconic California burrito topping is carne asada. Carne asada just translates to grilled meat. What we're looking for specifically though is skirt steak or flank steak. For our marinade, mix together one third cup of olive oil, quarter cup of soy sauce, juice of one lime, really squeeze it out. Think suicide squeeze, not safety squeeze. Half a cup of orange juice, four cloves of garlic, half a cup of tightly packed cilantro leaves, de-seed and mince up one jalapeno, add in salt and pepper to your taste, a tablespoon of cumin and a tablespoon of coriander. Mix that all together and pour it over your meat in a freezer bag and let it refrigerate from anywhere from an hour to overnight. Every burrito I had in San Diego had pico de gallo as the salsa, but I can tell you a good salsa verde or salsa roja are also fantastic. Cut up half an onion to a nice small mince. If you want a chunkier salsa, just make your cuts bigger. Also cut up four Roma tomatoes, removing the juicy inner bits, and mince them to a similar size to your onions. Cut up another about half cup of cilantro, or more if you like cilantro. Cut half a jalapeno or one serrano and remove the seeds and the core and cut to a very fine mince. If you don't mind a little spice, just leave the seeds in. Squeeze in the juice of one lime and mix that all together. Salsa tastes better if you let it sit for a while before serving, so feel free to make this part a day in advance. Our next step is to make the tortillas. Measure out 300 grams of all-purpose flour. Add in one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and whisk that all together. Slowly mix in three quarters of a cup of water, and then immediately after, a quarter cup of vegetable oil. Combine the dough together until all the flour has been picked up from the sides of your bowl, and then move it to a floured work surface. Knead the dough for about five to 10 minutes. The dough should be slightly sticky, but still smooth. As with any other step in this recipe, it's totally okay to substitute store-bought versions for the homemade versions I'm teaching you. In this case, unless you have an exceptionally large frying pan or flat top grill, you won't be able to make the same massive size of burrito you get at a restaurant, but the taste and the texture of a homemade tortilla will be significantly better. So make the choice that's right for you. Once you're finished kneading your dough, wrap it in plastic wrap and let it rest for at least an hour. 
The thing that separates a California burrito from other types is of course french fries. To make ours, grab four washed russet potatoes and cut them into fry-like shapes with the skin still on. Rinse the fries under cold water to rinse off the starch and let them soak for about half an hour. After they are finished soaking, prep a large pot of boiling water. Once it's boiling, add a bit of salt to your taste and a tablespoon of vinegar. Boil the fries for 10 minutes and then drain the fries in a colander and the, let the excess moisture steam off of them. Preheat an oven to 450 degrees and spread the fries out on a baking sheet and thoroughly cover them with oil. Seriously, use more oil than you think you need. Put the fries in the oven for 15 minutes Flip them over and bake them for another 15 to 20 minutes until they are golden brown and crisp. If the fries are looking dry at any point in this process, add a little more oil. Take the finished fries out of the oven and immediately transfer them to a paper towel lined bowl and toss them with salt. The California burrito always has guacamole. Chop up a quarter of an onion, do the same with a bunch of cilantro to your taste, Deseed half a jalapeno, cut that up, and add all of that to your mortar and pestle. Pound those together with a pinch of salt to make a rough paste which will make the base of our guacamole. Traditionally, guacamole is made in the Mexican version of a mortar and pestle called a molcajete, which I probably just mispronounced, and it's going to give you the best taste. If you don't have a mortar and pestle, this can be made with a food processor or even just by mashing the avocado with a fork. I do have a mortar and pestle though, so I'm going to use it. Cut up and remove the good stuff from four avocados. Make sure to grab any stray ground balls and avoid a foul tip like I did there. Pound that together in your mortar and pestle. Add in the juice of half a lime, any extra salt necessary, and you're done. And you can even serve it out of the mortar for extra style points. Carne asada is traditionally done on a grill, but a good cast iron will get you close enough. While you preheat your pan to medium heat, remove the steak from the marinade and pat it dry to remove any excess liquid. Let it cook for about 5-6 to six minutes on each side and resist the urge to flip it over in the meantime. You're looking to cook it to a nice medium rare, with at least a little bit of pink on the inside. Once it's done, set it aside to rest before cutting it up. After your carne asada is rested, cut it up against the grain and then into bite-sized pieces. If you do your cuts precisely enough, no one will notice that you lost some of your footage. Unwrap your ball of dough, divide it into six pieces. Roll out each piece as wide and as thin as possible. You're aiming for about 12 inches wide. It's going to contract in the pan, so make it bigger and thinner than you think you need. Sadly, I'm not an expert at this yet, and this was not my best bunch of homemade tortillas. They may not have been as big or as perfectly round as I've made in the past, but they were still delicious and well worth the extra work. Place the rolled out tortilla onto the largest pan you have without any cooking oil until it starts to bubble up. Then flip and repeat. Once it's done cooking, put it under a kitchen towel to let it steam so it stays warm and fluffy. Next, grate up a little bit of cheese. I just used a basic cheddar. And after all those many steps, it's time to assemble this fantastic burrito. Start with a layer of cheese, then a couple scoops of guacamole. Put on your carne asada and then your pico de gallo. Finish it off with fries and roll your burrito up. This part of the process is tricky. Bring the left and right sides together and then roll away from you, keeping the toppings under the tortilla and holding the sides down with your pinkies. Grill the burrito on a dry pan, seam side down to seal it together, and then grill the other side for a minute to give it a little bit extra flavor. For a real authentic touch, wrap it in some aluminum foil. Bite into that burrito, which will soon be going, going, gone. Myers 0 for 3 today. Myers to left field! Deep far! Very good! A
walk-off home run. This edition of the San Diego Padres is simply unbelievable.